Well, I hope to show you a unique virus that a customer said that they had on their computer. However, when I received the, the computer, I couldn't find any of the telltale signs of a virus. It was acting slow and, and definitely had a virus there, but it wasn't interesting to look at at all. So in this video, I decided to go ahead and do a how-to on the easy transfer by Windows. And Microsoft makes a product, and it's been in existence since uh, Windows XP. It's a very good tool that will not only back up your data, but will also back up your settings, your desktop look, um, your favorites inside Internet Explorer, a whole host of um, very useful things. So let's get started. This is the Inspiron Dell 530. It's a fairly popular machine. I've seen quite a few of these 530s. It has Windows Vista on it. It's a uh, two-core quad. It's called Core 2 Quad, and it's an Intel chip. What I'm doing today is the customer said that there's a virus that is present on the machine. I hoped to record that virus today and show you something a little bit different. However, I, so far I haven't seen any signs of the virus um, coming up at all. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and back up the user data because he wanted a backup. So I thought that this would be a good opportunity to show you how to use Microsoft's built-in file transfer program and if you can boot the machine this far um, you can certainly get to it and then you'll just need an external hard drive to save the data onto. I will be using my cobbled together drive here uh, it's just an external drive in an enclosure with a uh, ATO power supply to a USB cable. But you can use, you know, big flash drives or thumb drives, whatever you have on hand. I just like to use this because it's uh, pretty massive. I've got a lot of backup jobs on that. But anyway, um, to to use the um, the transfer wizard. I've already brought it up, but you can see it's called Windows Easy Transfer and it's located right there. Let's look at these specs real quick on this computer. Okay, so it has it has six gig of memory. It's got a 64-bit operating system in it. So this has been upgraded to the Windows 7. Even though the case said Vista on it, this does have the Windows 7. Um, professional version on service pack number one. So um, that may complicate things just a bit because this Vista sticker here I do not see a another sticker on it anywhere for um, Windows 7 at all so I'm going to have to uh, call the customer on this machine and ask them to produce a uh, Windows 7 professional sticker for service pack 1 or whatever this is for the upgrade um, so I can continue on formatting this machine um, okay to put that aside for now because that's not what this video is about but uh, that's what's gonna happen if you are in repair and you notice that the Windows Edition is different than the sticker. You're going to have to get a sticker 
which means the customer should have purchased one and has that number available to you before you try to reformat this machine because if you go to um, you know start and computer there's two drives there's the C drive and there's the recovery drive and if I click on recovery drive I'm assuming that this recovery partition is probably for Vista and not for Windows 7 so uh, if we roll this back it's not going to help my customer at all in fact it's going to tick them off because I took them back down they had a Vista and they wanted Windows 7 so I need to make sure to call them but on to what I was going to show you today and I'll let you know how that works out in the end too um, you want to come down here in Windows 7 and type in Windows Easy Transfer and if you type in Windows Easy Transfer there it is there you can launch it here and it saves all these things accounts documents music pictures emails favorites videos it does a really good job of saving off your data to a hard disk so that if you completely wipe out a drive you can bring it back by running this tool again in the opposite order so I am going to go ahead and dump this customers entire computer on my hard drive that I just showed you this and then I'm gonna get that Windows 7 disk from them I'm gonna format the drive and then I'm gonna um, go ahead and run this utility again and put the data back on and you'll see that it, it works quite nice um, you cannot run this tool in safe mode so be aware of that okay so here we go I'm gonna hit next and it's asking for a method to transfer I am using an external hard drive which is this one you can see you can also use a network or a transfer cable that you can buy in the store I just use this one if you have a flash drive this will also work there and then this is my old computer now if I had been done um, reformatting this computer and fixing it up I will go here but for now I will start here and it's asking me what accounts I would like to go ahead and uh, a transfer and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with both of them I'm just waiting for it to finish up so as soon as it finishes up uh, scanning these two drives I will be back the Windows easy transfer has now scanned all accounts on the computer and it is um, ready for me to continue with the next step and you notice there's a check mark on each of the accounts the shared items as well as the name of the user at the top there so I am going to continue on it's telling me that I'm going to be needing 47.5 gig in total now that number might not be perfect but it gives you a starting point to know how big of a hard drive you're going to need it's asking me for a password now my accounts don't use a password but if yours do um, add one here I'm gonna hit save now it's asking me where I want to put this data now at this point I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my beast here my portable hard drive and I'm gonna plug it into the USB port here on the back of the machine And the reason why I don't do this sooner is because I don't want to include it in the backup. So I'll wait to the very last second. And I will go ahead and open up my computer. And I'll look for that uh, drive that I just turned on. I'm going to make a new folder. and I'm gonna name my backup okay now that I've made a file folder I am ready to go ahead and continue on with 
with this um, easy transfer file name. So I'm going to choose the backup drive that I just made the new folder on. I'm going to save it right in this folder here. And I'm going to hit the save button here. So you can see it is now transferring my two accounts to this portable hard drive right over here and you can see the blue light blinking away there that means it's saving the, the data and my my status bars are just now starting to move just a little bit so this is going to take some time so when it finishes up I'll be back for some more thoughts well okay I've got all these um, accounts saved there's two of them it took it took quite a while to do um, as you can see there's um, you know almost 50 gig worth of data there and this first account here had a lot of small files so it did take a long time maybe a couple hours so uh, the next thing you want to do once that is done collecting is hit the next button here and you'll get this message that the transfer is complete now I am going to call the customer and find out what they want to do about this Vista versus Windows 7 problem and uh, and then I'll format the drive and uh, put this uh, file transfer back going the other way so that the data is going from the drive back into the computer okay so that's it for now I'll be back as soon as uh, that happens I want to finish up here real quick just by hitting this next and close and put the drive away so nothing happens to their data we'll see you soon okay well I had contacted the customer and told him about the uh, Vista Windows 7 problem and ask and I shall receive so they produced this copy of Windows 7 professional and brought it to me it's got the valid sticker right there so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install this Windows 7 and as soon as I do I will be back and we will finish up with the easy transfer and I'll show you how to move all the data back onto the new Windows 7 install so hang out for that I just wanted to update you on this um, upgrade okay I'm back I finally finished installing this Windows 7 professional the 64-bit version for this machine and I have opened up my system properties page and the reason why I've opened it there's two things you want to do before you transfer data back over and the first thing is you want to make sure that your your Windows is fully activated and genuine and if not go ahead and click the button to activate it online and make sure you're fully activated and then the second thing you want to do before using the easy transfer is to make sure that you're using the same service pack edition um, that you saved in and if you remember at the first part of this video I came to this exact same place and I looked and I was on service pack one and there are no service packs yet on this one so I am going to go into the Windows Update Manager and download Service Pack 1 from Microsoft and as soon as I update and get to Service Pack 1 I will um, continue this video so that's the next step is to make sure that your Service Pack is on the same Service Pack um, that you saved Easy Transfer in okay I will be back Hi guys, it's been at least one day since we've started the transfer on the Dell Inspiron 530 and I finally got the service pack 1 to install and I used the Microsoft Windows 7 update website so it does take time because a lot of times what they'll do is they'll send you other files before you get the actual service pack well I just went ahead and did other things while I was waiting for this to happen so it does take some time and you have to be patient um, but I finally did
get the service pack one to go ahead and install on this machine so now we are able to continue on with the windows easy transfer I just wanted to say a quick word about using the easy transfer with different service packs the reason why I make sure that the same service pack is used when I save the data as when I retrieve the data is in the past I have had problems with the service packs not matching and the easy transfer failing and when you only have one shot at putting the customer data back you want to make sure it doesn't fail so that's why I make sure that I make sure the service packs match okay uh, let's uh, turn on this drive and start moving data the other way so my data is right here on this portable hard drive go ahead and turn it on make sure we're plugged in here so it's detecting the drive and here's where it was saved So as you can see, it's really easy to move this data back and forth. It's asking me what accounts I want to move back. And of course, these are the two that I saved. And I'm just going to hit the transfer. 47.5 gig. Remember, that was the number we had before. So it's really this simple. As soon as something happens, I will be back. Well, okay, it's finished. Uh, easy transfer is done finishing the 50 gigs worth of data that this customer had. And um, you can see that my desktop has now changed to uh, the way that it used to look. And if you wind this video back to the very beginning, you'll see all those icons up there. And, and uh, everything is back in its original spot right down to the favorites inside Internet Explorer. So the only thing left to do with this computer is to install an antivirus. I like to install Microsoft antivirus because it's free and it works well. And then call the customer and have them pick it up. So that is all there is to the easy transfer. I know it seems like a lot of steps, but if you do the prep work right in the very beginning, the rest will go smooth and you won't worry about your data not um, going back on the machine properly. That could be a real nightmare, especially if the data does not belong to you <laughs> or it's very important data. That wraps up this video for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.